If you own an AR-15 rifle, and more specifically, if you've ever bought a trigger adapter for that AR-15 called an FRT-15, then recently you may have received a letter from the ATF claiming that that trigger was illegal. So what prompted this? What do you need to do? What are your options? What are your rights? Stick around because that's what we're discussing on this week's video. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're all having a great week and gearing up for another awesome weekend. As I talked about on the intro, this week we are talking about a recent-ish development in the constant fight between the ATF and private gun owners in the United States. There's always this push and pull between the federal government and people who espouse their Second Amendment rights, as you're very well aware. Well, recently, and I won't go into a deep dive on all this because there are plenty of other resources out there where you can find this all out, but recently in January of this year, the ATF kind of took target at, there's a company called Rare Breed Arms that was selling a specific type of trigger called an FRT-15. The FRT-15 the, is a trigger attachment for the AR-15 type rifle, and what the FRT stands for is Forced Reset Trigger. So what it would do, according to the ATF, is that this trigger would use the firing cycle of the rifle to make it unnecessary for the operator to pull the trigger for every time that they want to fire a round. In other words, the ATF is arguing that this trigger converts the AR-15 into a fully automatic machine gun. Now, obviously, Rare Breed Arms disagrees with this and says that it does not do that. It still maintains a semi-automatic nature. It still requires an individual trigger pull for every round that the operator wants to um, to, to fire. So they are fighting. They're in court. However, while this litigation is pending, right, a judge has issued a restraining order for Rare Breed Arms to stop selling and stop shipping out these triggers to any new customers. And the ATF has started sending letters to people that they know have bought these triggers, asking them or politely demanding them to voluntarily surrender those triggers because in their opinion, it is illegal for a private individual to possess them. So if you've ever bought one of those triggers, those FRT-15s, you've likely gotten one of those letters from the ATF. And if you haven't, you very well might soon. In addition to that, beyond the letters, the ATF is actually sending agents, sometimes actual ATF agents, and sometimes detectives with local police forces that they're working in connection with, to knock on people's doors and ask, are you so-and-so, did you buy this trigger? So if this happens, what are your rights? What do you have to do? Well, the first thing I'd tell you, and this is just a general reminder to everybody out there, was that unless an officer shows up at your home accompanied with a warrant, a valid warrant, you're not legally obligated to tell them anything. You're not legally obligated to answer any questions. You're not legally obligated to confirm or to deny anything that they're asking. And so I typically will always tell people, if you get a knock on the door from a, a government agent or a police officer, and they're asking questions about something that they're investigating, my number one rule of thumb is get their information. What, you know, what's your name? What's your phone number? What's your email address? Do you have a business card? And then respectfully tell them, look, I understand that you have questions. What I'd like to do is I'd like to contact my attorney and have him reach out to you and see how he can help. You're not confirming anything. You're not denying anything. You're simply saying, I'd like my attorney to be the one to speak with you. The biggest reason for doing that is remember any statement you make to them is an admission that they can then use in court, regardless of whether or not they read you your Miranda rights or do any of that. If you make a statement to them, it can be used against you. Okay, so if they're talking to you on your front porch and they say, are you so-and-so? Did you Do you own an AR-15 rifle? Did you buy this FRT trigger? If you say yes, 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 and it turns out down the line that those triggers are illegal, they now have an admission from you that you committed that offense. And so you don't want to be making any of those admissions. Whereas if you have an attorney who can be the liaison between you and the agent, anything I say to them is not an admission that you're making. And so a lot of times an attorney can make that happen in a way 
that it's not putting you in danger of making any statements that are going to be incriminating down the line. The other thing that is important to know is every case is different. Every client is different. Every set of facts, every set of circumstances is different. So what is the best course of action for you to take may be very different than what is the best course of action for somebody else to take. And what I mean by that is for some clients, I would advise them, look, let's just give them the trigger. Let's voluntarily surrender it. Let's move on and call it a loss and, and that's it. For some clients, I would say, let's absolutely not give them the trigger. Let's not even say we have it. Let's just ignore it and see what happens. It depends on your individual situation, what your risk tolerance is, what your history looks like, what other concerns you have, what are the driving and motivating factors between you and how you want to see this matter resolved. So always talk to a lawyer before you make any type of decision, be that to voluntary surrender the trigger or not. What you can't do is just ignore it. Okay. You can't just ignore it and then hope it goes away. It very well might, but more like more than likely you're going to hear from these agents again. And if you just straight ignore them, they're going to take that as a sign that you're hiding something. Okay, so always at least reach out to a lawyer and have that lawyer make contact with those agents, because then if the decision is made that we are not going to comply with that request and we're going to be holding on to a trigger, at least we, we, the lawyer, can communicate that to the agent in a respectful way and say, look, we understand your position. We disagree. We think this trigger is perfectly legal. Therefore, we won't be um, surrendering it. If there are any other updates in the litigation, please feel free to let us know. So. Remember, kind of two rules of thumb. Don't answer any questions and reach out and contact a defense lawyer right away in your state uh, is most likely going to be the, the best way to handle that because they're going to be in the best position to kind of interface with, with those agents. But reach out to a lawyer. Um, if you have any questions on this or anything else, please feel free to give me a call. Give me an email. I'm happy to discuss it with you. As always, if you've received one of these letters and don't know what to do or you know somebody that has or you're worried that you're going to, I can kind of tell you how to prepare for it. So give me a call. Let me know what questions you have, and I'm happy to discuss them with you at that time. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you all next week. And until then, be good and stay on the right side of the bars.